All right, the time has come to turn this 55 gallon into a planted tank uh, paradise for these, uh, these little egg bearers that I've had for a while now. The tank is established, it's, uh, it's ready, and uh, let's go ahead and jump into this project and, turn, and give this tank a real upgrade. It's going to be a complete makeover of this tank and I'm going to do it in a way that is going to be the least amount of stress producing for the fish that are in here. And I'm going to be taking out the internal filters, both of them, but using the media that's inside of them and you'll see uh, what I mean when I do that. I'm going to be uh, pulling out that large heater which is cooling down as we speak. I've unplugged it. And uh, of course, pulling out this artificial plant. A big shout out to the Aquarium Co-op for helping out on this project. These are some of the items that I'll be using. I've got some active flora substrate that I picked up at the local pet supermarket some live plants that were sent over by the aquarium co-op. You'll be seeing those in a minute. I'll be replacing the Eheim heater that's in there with these two 100 watt heaters and they'll be run through a, uh, a controller. I'll be using some of the aquarium co-op Easy Green and Root Tabs. I also have uh, a couple lids I picked up at the local Petco. So I'll be upgrading the top of the aquarium, which currently has one of those evaporation lids. I also have a special light that was sent to me by the aquarium co-op. This is a light that is specific for plants, so it provides a full spectrum and it's 48 inches, perfect for the aquarium I'll be using it on. And there's also some CO2 that will not be added in this, in this video, but will be added down the road. But a big shout out to the Aquarium Co-op for, uh, for helping out with this project. As you can see, they've provided quite a bit. This old reliable um, Marine Land Emperor will be the hang on back filter. I'm gonna much prefer having this inside of the aquarium instead of those two internal filters. If you follow my channel, you know I've been keeping this uh, Buchachromis brodesii yellow in this aquarium because he was picking on the Autopharynx tetrastigma in the 300. But I'm going to go ahead and put him back in the 300 and keep a close eye on him. Hopefully I can keep him. He's a beautiful fish. I'd hate to have to rehome him, but he might not give me any choice. But he'll be going back into the 300 while I'm doing this project so I can keep an eye on him for a few hours and make sure he behaves. These evaporation plastic sheets are great. They have a purpose, I really like them. I use them a lot. They're very inexpensive when you, you compare them to the price of glass lids, but it's not the aesthetic, the look that I'm looking for on this aquarium. The heaters uh, from the co-op are over here. They're acclimating. You should float, you know, you should acclimate your heaters for about 15 to 30 minutes before plugging them in. And the, uh, that large Eheim 300 watt heater is cooled down. So I can go ahead and pull that out and I'll pull out this plastic plant. Sorry there, Cory Catfish. This Eheim heater is, is just a beast, 300 watts. A bit of an overkill for a, uh, for a tank of this size, but Definitely uh, not the look I'm looking for. Uh-oh, somebody came attached with the heater. It's called a whiptail catfish. Very odd looking guy. He was stuck to the heater. I'll go ahead and put him in. Very cool fish. He's going to have to find somewhere else to hang out. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some substrate to the outside edges of the aquarium because that's where I want to 
uh, plant some of the jungle val. So I have a sort of a jungle val look coming in from the sides. So I'm gonna move some of that white substrate in and then drop some of the, uh, some of that flora plant friendly substrate into the aquarium. I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. This is a pagoda snail. Look at that guy. Beautiful snail. So what other plants do I have to work with? I have some crypts, some anubias, some water sprite. I'll probably let those just float in the aquarium. Some Amazon swords, I'll probably put those right next to the uh, jungle val. Anubius, Bartari, Bartari. This one's an Amazon sword. Again, I'll probably put this one on the right. One right and one left. And some more water sprite. All right, let's go ahead and get the rest of the planting done. I'm letting the internal filters run so they can help clear it up. And then I'll bring over the uh, the other filter, the marine land hang on back. I'll remove the sponges from the internal filters and put them inside of that hang on back filter. And that's gonna provide me with zero loss of beneficial bacteria that's in filter media. Of course, there's a lot of it in this substrate right now. Let's go ahead and carry on here and then I'll let it clear up and show you what, what's what. All right, so it's cleaning up a bit and I am liking the way it looks with that different color on the outside edges. The jungle uh, val has stayed in place, but now that I can see it with the cloudiness gone, I can see how I want to uh, position it a little bit differently. All right, let's go ahead and add some of these root tabs. These are uh, root tabs from the aquarium co-op. See the way they look. Just put them in the substrate around where you're going to be planting. You can see I've already brought over the, um, the marine land. The marine land filters in place. So I'll just throw a few little root tabs just in the area here. Make the soil a little more nutritious. Even though I've heard this uh, jungle valve grows like crazy. Doesn't need a lot of help. But I need I need every uh, every help I can get since I'm a notorious plant killer. I put some crypts some crypts in the foreground, and now I'm going to put uh, some Amazon swords in there. They're a little bit bigger, so I'll put them behind the crypts. You can see the way the um, the co-op packages. There's a plastic bag, then there's a moist sort of a mesh bag. And then inside of that, you have this, uh, this pot. So you have to take it out of the pot and then be sure you, you, you clean away all of, this, all of this foam. You don't want that in the aquarium. You can use something like a fork and then just gently work it away from the roots. So let's get these Amazon swords in there. I'll put a, one on each side. Two of these fit perfectly on each side of the um, marine land hang on back so it works out just right. No more internal filters in this tank. Got some beautiful water sprite. I'm not sure if this is the same kind of sprite that can just float as well as being the, in, in the uh, substrate but it's got some beautiful roots so I'm going to go ahead and Put it in the substrate. You can see very healthy, very pretty. The emphasis was on getting plants that were hard to kill since I have a uh, 
a tendency to uh, kill them. There's going to be some melt back. That's normal, and so I'll expect to see that. And then, and then they should actually start thriving. Now I have some Anubias that I'm going to be figuring out where I want to attach it. I haven't quite figured out where or how. And instead of using what I normally do, which is to super glue the Anubias down, I think in this case I might just uh, a beautiful Anubias. I think in this case I might take these Anubias and and drill some holes in the wood and place them in the wood instead of using uh, super glue. We'll see how that works. So here we are. The final, the final setup. Is it the world's most beautiful planted tank? Certainly not. But it is a great improvement over the look I had going before. As with all newly planted tanks, there'll probably be some some melt back in the plants, you know, as they get as they get accustomed to uh, these water parameters, but hopefully they will grow back. There's a little bit of floating sprite at the top and a different type of sprite that I put in the in the substrate. You can see it in the back corner there. The two aquarium co-op heaters are installed and running through a controller. And the Anubias was wedged into the into natural occurring sections of the wood as opposed to uh, being glued down with super glue. We'll see if that holds, if the roots can actually take hold. Sprite on the right is floating at the top. I'll probably add a lot more of that. Love the way it looks at the top. Any tips, comments, suggestions you might have, please share them. This is a brand new thing for me. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with the look with the different filter, the different heating arrangement, and of course, live plants and a flat and a plant friendly substrate on each end of the tank. So thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to, um, if you like the video, hit that, hit that subscribe button and the bell and the thumbs up. And I hope to see you to talk about this and a lot more on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. Great group of fish keepers get together and talk about everything having to do with fish. And if you'd like to support the channel further, uh, consider becoming a member of the Garage Gang and a monthly supporter of the channel through the Patreon program. The uh, details are in the description below. Thank you, my friends. You are the best, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.